Algebra 2, Concept 28. In this concept, we're going to solve exponential and log equations. So let's get down some vocab definitions and formulas. So there will be two different methods to solve um, exponential and logarithmic functions. So the property of equality and switching forms. So first is property of equality. If the bases are the same in your equations, then in an exponential equation, you'll set the exponent expressions equal to each other, or in a log equation, you'll set the log values equal to each other, and then solve. The second method to solve these equations would be a method where you would simply switch forms. So if you can't use the property of equality to solve, then you're going to switch forms, which means you're going to rewrite a log logarithm in exponential form or rewrite an exponential in log form. Lastly, you need to remember the properties that you learned in the last concept. So I have given some examples to you here of the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. So notice I have a double arrow between each of them showing that you can go either way with these properties. So for the product property, you can expand with addition or going left to right, or you can condense going from right to left, addition with multiplication. All right, let's solve some of these. So first we're gonna start with some exponential equations for method one. This is using what we call the property of equality. So in the left-hand box, it says to solve exponential equations. And this is the property of equality. You want to, on both sides of the equal sign, find a common base, if you can, that can be raised to different powers to equal the bases in the original problem. And then set those powers equal to each other when the bases are the same. So if you look at number one, it's 100 to the x equals 1 tenth to the x minus 3. So look at the bases of 100 and 1 tenth. And think of a common number between them, a power that they share. So you can take 10 and raise it to the second power, and that's 100, which is what I did on the left side of my equation. I put a parenthesis around it because it's standing in for 100, and then I raise it to the x power because that's what was in the original problem. I can rewrite 1 tenth using that same base of 10 to the negative 1. And then I put a parenthesis around it because it's standing in for 1 tenth, and then put the power out to the side. So now I have rewritten this in terms of numbers or bases that are the same. So I do need to do a little simplifying with the powers. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So this becomes 10 to the 2x, I multiply, and this becomes 10 to the negative x minus 3, because I multiply that negative 1 through. Now the bases are the same, so this is where the property of equality comes to play. You can <clears throat> drop the bases and just set those exponents equal to each other. 2x equals negative x plus 3. Usually you'll have a much simpler equation then, and you simply solve. So x equals 1. Now look at number 2, 9 to the 2x and 27 to the x minus 1. So look at the bases, 9 and 27, and think it about a number that will be smaller than both of them that you could rewrite as that number raised to a power to stand in for 9 and 27. Well, I think of 3 because 3 squared is 9, so I replace 9 with 3 squared, and uh, 3 to the third power is 27. So see how I have replaced 27 with 3 to the third power? I put those in parentheses <clears throat> with the powers to the upper right. Now I need to raise the power to a power, so multiply, get rid of those parentheses. And my bases are the same, so now I can set my powers equal to each other. So 4x equals 3x minus 3. And then let's just solve the equation by subtracting 3x from both sides. So x equals negative 3. So that's the property of equality with um, exponential equations. So you're going to examine the bases and rewrite them as the same number raised to different powers. You can use that same property with a logarithm equation. So look at the box on the right. To solve log equations using that property of equality, you want to look at the log bases. If one is equaling the other and the bases are the same, 
Then you can set the values of the logs equal to each other and then solve for x. So if you look at number three, notice I've underlined the bases. Log base, I think that's a five, <laughs> of four x minus seven equals log base five of x plus five. So when I have one logarithm of a base equaling another logarithm of that same base, I can simply set those values equal to each other. I can drop those log expressions. So I get 4x minus 7 equals x plus 5. Then I'm just going to do the steps to solve for x. So 3x minus 7 equals 5, 3x equals 12, and then x equals 4. Now number 4, we have the natural log of 2x minus 4 equals the natural log of x plus 6. So one log um, equals another log of the same base. So I can drop those log expressions and set the values equal to each other. 2x minus 4 equals x plus 6. And then just do the steps to solve that equation. So x equals, and I'll add my 4 to both sides, 10. Now the second method to solve exponential and log equations is simply switching forms. So um, if it's exponential, you'll rewrite in log form, and if it's in log form, rewrite in exponential. And that's if you're not able to use that property of equality. Remember, when you're rewriting a logarithm, think of the log ride, that motion, to help you know how to place your numbers. Now, no, the first example, 4 to the x equals 11. So we cannot rewrite 4 and 11 as the same number um, to different powers. So in this case, we're going to switch it to log form. So we build our logarithm. It's log of base 4, 11 the value, and that equals the exponent. <clears throat> in my mind, I always do the log ride motion to make sure that I've placed everything in the right location. Now you can grab your calculator and do change of base. And so you'll take log of 11 divided by log of 4, and that'll give your answer approximately, we'll go to um, three places, so 1.730. The second problem, 7 to the 9x equals 15. So our bases are 7 and 15, and they are not able to be rewritten using a common number raised to a different power. So we'll need to switch forms. So log base 7 of 15 equals 9x. So grab your calculator. You're going to use change of base and take log of 15 divided by log of 7. But then you'll also need to divide that by 9 to get your final answer. So x is approximately equal to 0.155. All right, in this next problem, and notice that now we have a logarithm. And so we don't have one log equaling another, so we can't use the property of equality. So you're going to switch forms. So I've drawn the log ride motion. So it's a base of four raised to the third power equals five x minus one. Now just do the math. 64 equals five x minus one. Add one to both sides and then divide by five. So x equals 13. Looking at the next problem, see how you can do the same method with that. Log base 2 of x minus 6 equals 5. So you can rewrite it. You can do the log ride. So it's 2 to the fifth power equals x minus 6. Solve for x, so x equals 38. All right, so those are four examples of using the second method to solve exponential and log equations, switching forms. Sometimes you'll use those properties of condensing or expanding to help you solve a log e uh, equation. Notice on this first example, we have one log expression added to another equaling a number. So if you have two log expressions that are added, you can condense that with multiplication. So we're gonna condense it down to one log base two expression of x times x minus two. So I'm gonna distribute that x so it becomes x squared minus 2x. Now we can switch forms. So 2 to the third power equals x squared minus 2x. Notice the red arrow indicates the log ride motion to help you know and remember how to rewrite that log in exponential form. So now I am do 2 to the third power, which is 8. Ooh, 
getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, there we go. So then we move the eight over, and since it's a quadratic, I factored it. Um, it will factor as x minus four times x plus two. Then as you've done before to solve quadratics, just set them each equal to zero and solve. When you get two answers for a logarithm, you need to check both of them. So if you place positive four into the original um, logarithm expression, the left side will equal three. Now, if you place negative two in, however, you will get an error on your calculator because you cannot, when you plug in negative two to that first expression, you get log base two of negative two. You cannot have a log value that's negative. There's no power you can raise two to that'll make a number negative. So that answer will not work. So simply plug those numbers in into your calculator and see if you get numbers, the left side equaling the right side, or if you get an error, that means that that is not a solution. All right, let's look at the second one. We have a natural log now. The first thing we need to do is isolate that log expression. So let's subtract the three from both sides. So we'll get 18 on the right side. Now with the four, we could rewrite it as a power, but it's gonna be simpler to just divide. So we have the natural log of negative x equals four and a half. Now we can switch forms. Remember it's base e. And there's that motion, so e to the 4.5 equals negative x. Divide by negative one. Um, and so in your calculator, just use your base e button, raise it to the 4.5 power, divide by negative one. Your answer is approximately negative 90. Now we plug it back in and that's gonna work for us. Um, you will get that the left side equals the right side. All right, on C, it's a lot like A. So see how our two expressions on the left are added? So let's condense those with multiplication. X minus nine times X minus three. Oh, I'm gonna let this one run a minute. So just stop writing your problem because we're gonna go back and change that value. I realized this when I was part of the way through. There, so change your problem so that it equals three. <laughs> My apologies. Now let's condense with multiplication. So we have <clears throat> log base three of multiplying together x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals three. And now let's rewrite it in exponential form. So three to the third power equals our value. That's 27. So let's subtract 27 from both sides. So zero equals x squared minus 12x. Now you can just factor out a greatest common factor of x and set those each equal to zero. So our possible answers are x equals zero and x equals 12. So when we check, if we plug zero in, right away we get a negative number for our log value and that will not work. 12 works, however, the left side will equal the right side. All right, let's look at this real life problem. So as the town gets smaller, the population of its high school decreases by 6% each year. The senior class has 320 students now. In how many years will it have 100? Write an equation, then solve the equation without graphing. Remember the formula for exponential decay. So I've written that below, exponential decay. Now let's plug in. So we've got ending value of 100, beginning value of 320, our rate is 6%, so 0 0.06. So you'll have some math Excel problems that ask you to put in equations like this with these numbers. Now we can do some simplifying to solve. So let's divide both sides by 320, and that'll give us 0.3125. Subtract in the parentheses 0.94 to the t power. Now you can use a logarithm to solve. So rewrite it in log form. Log base 94 hundredths um, of a value of 0.3125 equals t, then put that on your calculator using change of base, and it'll be about 18 and 0.8 years, almost 19 years. All right, number two, for a sound with intensity i, the loudness of the sound in decibels was given by that function. You've done these before. This is a little different, however. Look at a, the noise level inside a convertible driving along the freeway with the top up is 80 decibels. With the top down, it's 93. Find the intensity of the sound with the top up and top down. All right, let's start with the top up. So, 
We're going to plug in 80 for the loudness. We're going to don't know what i is, but we know what i sub 0 is, 10 to the negative 12. So now we'll just start solving this equation. We can divide both sides by 10. We can now rewrite it in exponential form. Remember, it's a base 10. So it's 10 to the 8th power equals that expression. We can multiply both sides by the denominator, 10 to the negative 12, and we'll get about 0 0.0001 watts per meter squared. Now with the top down, it's louder. Intensity is going to be a little higher. So 93 equals the formula. And remember to plug in 10 to the negative 12 for i sub 0. And the solving steps are the same. Divide by 10 and then rewrite it in exponential form. It's a base 10 problem. So 10 to the 9.3 equals that expression. Multiply both sides by negative 10 to the negative 12, and you get 0 0.002 watts per meter squared. All right, now it's time for some independent practice. Pause your video, work th through these problems, and then come back and check your work. All right, check your work for numbers one and two. Notice that we're using the property of equality. On number one, you can change them both to base seven. So your final answer would be negative five thirds. On number two, you can rewrite those dropping the log expression. So your answer is three. Now look at your answers to three and four. So now we're switching forms. You're switching three into log form using your calculator and the change of base to get your answer. So x is approximately equal to 2.253. And number four, rewriting that logarithm using the log ride motion. Five to the fourth equals that value. Just do the math. So x will equal 123 or 123. And now check your final independent practice. So you'll need to condense, first of all, by multiplication and then rewrite using that log ride motion, 3 squared equals 9x squared. Take the square root of both sides. So x possible answers are 1 and negative 1. If you plug each of those in one at a time, your left side of your equation will match your, the right side. So <clears throat> both of those answers check. And that concludes the notes for concept 28.